Right. Um, I've, as if those of you here, who are here at six, you know I've just finished building that thing, so I'm not 100% there, but I will do my best. Um, when Claire asked me to do a quick talk about this, I <coughs> came up with the title Ambient Artistic Development and Crowd Collaboration, and immediately regretted that. Um, and I'll get onto that, I think, in a bit. But everyone's been asking how it's done and what it is. This is the camera. This is a digital camera at the top, so it's all digital, everything I do. Uh, a hunk of cardboard covered in duct tape and a 1950s Kodak Duoflex camera at the bottom. Uh, this is the sort of camera where people would hold them here, look, line up through the viewfinder, through the top one, and then take the shot um, through this bit here, which has currently got a big screw in it. But that, so the film gets exposed with the bottom one and the viewfinder at the top is used just to line it up. You can't get film for this anymore. You can bodge it to take different film, but it's effectively it's redundant technology. So what I'm doing is I'm repurposing redundant technology and turning it into a lens. So the digital camera looks through here, there's a mirror there, and, it, and the image comes, up, comes through there. It's filtered by the viewfinder itself, which is a piece of, sort of bubble-shaped glass, call it bubble glass in the trade, and there is a trade. Um, which warps the image ever so slightly. So you can see these round edges on the sides here, and you can't quite make it out on this, but there's a little, because this is raised up, as the focus falls off, you get this depth of field, or this faux depth of field thing happening. So there's that. Um, what it's doing, what, what it's doing to interest me is it's processing the image in the camera. So rather than, rather than, Oh, sorry, it's manipulating the image within, within the contraption, within the machine. So the manipulation happens here. All I do digitally is process the colours, process the saturation, um, as, as you would do in a dark room. I don't manipulate the image in any way. That's how it comes out of the can. Um, so on a really superficial level, the whole thing with looking through the cardboard tube and the duct tape and the making something absurd looking... That's been echoed in, in the piece over there, and that, that came about mostly because um, I realised that when you've got it in a big window, monitors, you can't quite see them. I don't know if you noticed the, the stupid big screen in, in Victoria Square, which is uh, emitting noise pollution, but you can't actually see the image in the summer because the sun shines on it, and nobody thought that one through. Um, I don't like the big screen, by the way. Uh, so, yeah, so this idea of here, this exists to, to block the light out, to stop you getting uh, any reflections. There, the tubes exist to block the light out. Other than that, I don't know if there's any particularly intellectual approach to what I've done. I just, uh, it just kind of evolved over about a month. And that's kind of what I want to talk about in this idea of ambient artistic development and crowd collaboration. Claire saw my work. She thought that would be nice. Um, we were originally going to hang up some prints, then she saw these animations I've been playing about with, so she said, do you want to do something like that? And then it just got sort of carried away. I, I did make it all up as I went along, and I'm, and I'm proud of that. I think that's, that's kind of the point, especially when we're talking about a project space, a place for people to, to figure stuff out and to work on ideas and develop their, their art or their practice. Um, I am the artist. People keep saying, oh, this is Pete, he's the artist, which is kind of strange because I don't really, I'm not used to that. I've, this is the first proper piece of work I've done. Um, I, I called myself an artist about a year ago, it was just as a bit of a joke, um, because I realised you could. You don't have to ask permission. You don't have to go to artist school and get a certificate to say you're an artist. You just say you're an artist. It doesn't mean anybody takes you seriously as an artist. It doesn't mean your work's any good. But you can, you can have that label. And it got me thinking, oh, what is an artist? And the closest I've come to is an artist is sort of like a philosopher, but not really. It's somebody who thinks about the world through manipulating stuff, through taking things and using them wrongly. But that's a bit like a hacker. And a hacker is somebody who... Who, um, in the in the proper sense of the word, not in the in the um, sensation sense, but it's a hacker is somebody who takes a piece, takes some equipment, and repurposes it in the wrong way. 
to do some, makes it do something else. So to take a piece of computer code and use it, wrong, use it to do the wrong thing, it needs to do something different. To take a bunch of cardboard boxes and monitors and turn it into a sort of viewfinder thing. So is that an artist? Is an artist a hacker? I don't know. I'm still figuring this stuff out. And as I've been figuring that stuff out, it's... Sorry, I've... I've uh, yeah, pull that back in. I've evolved to this point. I've started off doing fanzines when I was a teenager. Um, about 2000, I moved into blogging. I've been blogging for about 11 years. And that, again, it's this... The zines and the blogging is this thing of the autonomous publisher who can do what they want with their publication. You don't ask permission for what to write or how to write it or how to present it. Uh, it's all yours. It's your... And you send it out and you distribute it out there. You're also part of a community of bloggers or zine makers or practitioners or what have you. Um, that's how you sustain these things, these communities. I can talk about this for a lot longer than I'm not going to because the blogging led to photography through Flickr. Uh, when Flickr started in whenever it was, 2004, 2005, um, that was how I evolved into an artist, was through Flickr. This thing of... I used it just as somewhere to dump my photos, and then I noticed that I was getting... Somebody noticed that I was getting better at taking photos, so I started looking at other people's photos on Flickr and sharing stuff with them. We started doing Flickr meets. That's how I met Matt, who's at the back there. Um, he's become a good friend, and other people, some of whom might be here, um, and started learning from each other. It's a sort of peer learning thing. I, I never went to photography school. I never... Um, read a book on how to take proper photos. I learned from my peers and from practice and from experience. And similarly with this event, um, any problems I had, I asked um, using Twitter a lot because that's the predominant place at the moment where people do this. If I couldn't work something out, I'd ask on Twitter. If I needed some help, I'd say, oh, you know, if anybody's around, can you come down at this time? And people, some of them are here today, came along and either helped me lug stuff around or figured things out. Um, the computers, some of the monitors, some of the equipment has come from people who are part of that community, which, which I'm part of. I wouldn't say I've created that community or with any sense of deliberation. It's just evolved around mutual interests and mutual, mutual um, help, I suppose. So in that sense, I'm a community artist, maybe. But community is a horrible, horrible term. It doesn't mean anything. It's used by ourselves to rip off other people. It's a horrible, horrible thing. But in this sense, community is, is a place, it's people who share things, who help other people, who are transparent in the way that they relate to each other. Friends, if you like. The term <laughs> friends is, is, has a lot of bad connotations since Facebook made it mean nothing in particular. But this idea of, of people who who through some personal connection, some emotional connection, or some just nerdy uh, similar interest overlap, will share, their, <coughs> will share what they know, they'll help each other, and they'll be transparent in what they'll do. Someone said to me, I should, I should lock this down, I shouldn't tell anybody about this, because this is my thing, this is my unique thing. It's like, well, firstly, I got the idea of someone else, so it's not my idea anyway. Secondly, am I really that paranoid about my work? Am I really that, well, not paranoid, do I have such little faith in my talent that I would hide this away? Surely, if everybody can do this, that challenges me to be the best person who can do it. I'd much rather have a wide community of people doing what I'm doing than being the only one who's got some proprietary system for creating photos. That's, the, that's cowardly, surely. And it's much more fun when everybody's doing it. And then uh, my final note is improvised from here. Um, uh, I think that's enough. Like I say, I'm normally a little bit more coherent when I'm talking about this stuff. Um, and I apologise if, if, if I haven't been. Um, I would like to thank everybody from uh, Claire for being effectively my mentor at the moment and telling me that it's okay to not know what the hell I'm doing and that's part of being an artist apparently. To, um, to everybody who's helped out at varying degrees. <coughs> To the library, to security guys at the library have been fantastic, and the poor buggers who work up there have had to put up with me ripping and tearing things apart. Um, yeah, and everyone who knows me, thank you very much. Thank you.